Brothers and sisters, last Friday we had a break on our usual Friday Bible study with a special topic on Mark chapter 8 verses 27 to 29 entitled, Who is Jesus to me? Tonight, we ponder on another question to why Jesus and the new covenant he brings is superior to the old covenant of Judaism. Thus, we continue on our study on the book of Hebrews chapter 8, entitled, The Superiority of the New Covenant, which will be led by Sister Charlene Thieu. But before we begin, let us first have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your word, which gives us understanding and hope. Thank you for the superior covenant, which provides us grace and forgiveness of sins. May you bless this time as we study your word and may you give us wisdom and understanding as we go through Hebrews chapter 8. May our lives be a living testimony of your word. We pray these in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our memory verse is Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Good evening, brothers and sisters. 
Before we start our study on Hebrews 8, let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for this opportunity to study your word. May you guide us and help us to really take into heart whatever revelation you have in store for us tonight. May you continue to ignite the deep desire to know you more, to know the truth, and to have an intimate relationship with you. Thank you for this time, Lord God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. It is in our human nature to prefer new versus old, to embrace new things and to throw or set aside old ones. Let us take, for example, cell phones. Cell phones, especially smartphones, are continually producing new models and with each new model having an upgraded version of the old one. Let's take a look at iPhone 13 Pro and its upgraded version, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Appearance-wise, the new model became bigger in size, there's a change in weight, and even the size of the screen became wider. But in my opinion, function-wise, it didn't change much. Recent studies and surveys show that more and more people stick to their old phones because the newer version doesn't show a significant difference from the old model. I can personally relate to this. If I don't see a clear difference from the two models, then why would I proceed to buy a new one? I would choose to stay with the old phone. In Hebrews chapter 8, let us together discover how the author argued to embrace the new covenant because this new covenant is not just an upgraded and improved version of the old one. It is entirely different from the old covenant. This is a superior covenant. Let us together read Hebrews 8 verses 1 to 13. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They served at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, The days are coming, declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their, their wickedness and will remember their, their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. 
The writer presented three evidences to further prove that Jesus is a superior high priest. Jesus Christ is a superior high priest because of his seat, his sanctuary, his superior covenant, which is the new covenant. In verses 1 to 2, the writer of Hebrews' main point is that Jesus Christ is God's superior high priest. A superior priest could never minister on the basis of an inferior covenant. Jesus Christ, our high priest, serves us from a position of all authority in heaven. Now, in the tabernacle and the temple of the old covenant, there was no place for the priest to sit down because their work was never finished. Under the law of Moses, a priest was expected to do continual services. Each repeated sacrifice was only a reminder that none of the sacrifices ever provided a finished salvation. In Hebrews 10 verse 11, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. In contrast, the work of Jesus is finished and completed. Therefore, he is seated in heaven. We have to note, though, that Jesus is not just seated. It is where he is seated that adds glory to his person and his work. He is seated on the throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. In Hebrews 10 verse 12, But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. This is accomplishing what the entire Levitical system could never accomplish. Now the scripture emphasizes that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. According to Pastor John MacArthur, in Israel, there was a ruling body of men known as the Sanhedrin. There, they, they are responsible for making judgments whenever justice was being executed in the land. There were always two scribes before the judges of the Sanhedrin. One scribe sat on the right hand and the other scribe sat on the left hand. The scribe who sat on the right hand always writes the acquittals, and it was always the responsibility of the scribe on the left hand to write the condemnations. In John chapter 3, verse 17, Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hence, his place is never on the left hand, but always on the right hand, for he writes the pardons for his own. To sum it all up, being on the right hand of the Father gives Jesus the honor, exaltation, and power. And this proves that God was in effect approving of his work. The second evidence that Jesus is a superior high priest lies not only where he is seated, but in his sanctuary. Jesus Christ today ministers in the heavenly sanctuary. Jesus' earthly birth into the tribe of Judah would not permit him to be an earthly priest because priest has to come from the tribe of Levi. This proves that Jesus is not a priest of the earthly tabernacle or temple, but a priest in the true one. In Hebrews 9 verse 24, for Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. And in Psalm 102 verse 19, The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth. God has a holy place in heaven, and that's where Jesus ministers. This sanctuary is the true tabernacle. The priests in the Old Testament serving in the temple were actually serving in the sanctuary that was just a copy, a temporary one, 
or a pattern of the true heavenly sanctuary. The author now provides details that every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one, who is Jesus Christ, also to have something to offer. Sacrifice for sin is essential to the concept of priesthood. Jesus represented a superior, high, superior priesthood and offered a superior sacrifice. The sacrifice of himself, he laid down his own life to atone for sin. First century Jews took tremendous pride in their temple. It was a spectacular architectural achievement. However glorious the Jerusalem temple was, it was of man. Therefore, it was nothing compared to the glory of the heavenly temple that Jesus served in. Again, the Old Testament services in the temples were just mere shadows of the true heavenly sanctuary. And this was revealed to Moses. Moses saw this pattern on the mount and duplicated the essentials in the earthly tabernacle. Therefore, there is a heavenly temple that served as a pattern for the earthly tabernacle and temple. Jesus' ministry as our high priest takes place in this heavenly temple, not in the copy and shadow built on earth. Now we have come to the author's last point. Jesus Christ is the superior high priest of the superior new covenant. Verse 7 says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. The fact that God mentions another covenant proves that there is something lacking in the old covenant. It is in the nature of man to come up with things that are new, but not needed. Like the example of the cell phone upgrade in the first part. God is not like that. If God established a new covenant, it means that there was something lacking in the old covenant. All covenants from the Old Testament to new were made on the basis of promises. God would promise to do something. That's what a covenant is. And the promises of this superior covenant are clearly outlined in verses 8 to 12. Number one, the Lord made it clear that this covenant would originate with God and not with man. God is the author, and since he is the author, this new covenant is under his terms. Men either accept it or reject it. Number two, this covenant is truly new, not merely new and improved. It's not an adaptation of the old. It is entirely new. Number three, the new covenant definitely began with Israel, but it was never intended to end with Israel. God promises to bless us with, and it is fulfilled when we accept the new covenant. In Galatians 3 verse 14, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Next, the new covenant features transformation from within, not regulation through external law. The old covenant came in with such terror that it made everyone obey out of fear. The new covenant works obedience through the law written in their mind and on their hearts. Number five, the new covenant also features a greater intimacy with God through Jesus Christ. Spurgeon is on point when he said, the best way to make a man keep a law is to make him love the law giver. And number six, the new covenant offers a true, complete cleansing from sin, different and better than the mere covering over of sin in the old covenant. We have to note, though, that the weakness of the old covenant was not in the covenant itself. 
it was in the weakness and inability of man. The reason the old covenant didn't work was because they did not take into heart God's covenant. Let us now see some differences of the old covenant and the new covenant. They were instituted at different times and places. They have different mediators. Moses mediated the old covenant. Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. They have different demands. The old covenant demanded a covenant of works. The new covenant fulfills the covenant of works through our faith in the completed work of Jesus Christ. They are different in how they were dedicated. The old covenant was dedicated with the blood of animals. The new covenant was dedicated with Jesus' blood, signifying his sacrificial death. They are different in their priest. The old covenant is represented by the priesthood of the law of Moses and high priest descended from Aaron. The new covenant declares that Jesus Christ is our superior high priest. They are different in their sacrifices. The old covenant demanded endless repetition of imperfect sacrifices. The new covenant provides a once and for all perfect sacrifice of the Son of God himself. They are different in how and where they were written. The old covenant was written by God on tablets of stone. The new covenant is written by God on the hearts of his people. They are different in their goals. The goal of the old covenant was to discover sin, to condemn it, and to set a fence around it. The goal of the new covenant is to declare the love, grace, and mercy of God, and to give repentance, remission of sin, and eternal life. The old covenant was confined to the descendants of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob according to the flesh. The new covenant is extended to all nations and races under heaven. They are different in what they actually accomplish. The old covenant made nothing perfect. The new covenant can and will bring in the perfection of God's people. Lastly, they are different in their duration. The old, the old covenant was designed to prepare the way for the new covenant and then pass away. The new covenant was designed to last forever. Lastly, in verse 13, the writer made a significant point. Now that the new covenant was, has been revealed, the old covenant is thereby obsolete. This is saying that everything in Jesus Christ is real and superior to everything else. The age of the law and the priest is over. The age of the Son is here forever. Let us not hold on to the old covenant. Jesus Christ is the perfect and only high priest of this new and superior covenant. That's the end of Hebrews 8. Our references are um, Pastor John MacArthur, David Guzik, and Warren Worsby. May you have a fruitful discussion with your respective care groups. Thank you and God bless. Bye. Good evening. We are glad that you joined our Friday night Bible study care group fellowship. Here are some announcements. Please join us on site this Lord's Day as we worship the Lord together. Let us also learn from Brother Jose Lee as he shares with us about the covenants of God. Next Friday night, we shall continue our marvelous Bible study series in Hebrews as Sister Rebecca Tan Cassis shares with us the first part of chapter 9, focusing on the earthly versus the heavenly tabernacle. Don't discard your pre-loved children's toys, school supplies, and Filipino books. Instead, donate them. 
Join Mission Possible's project in partnership with Miting Pangarap Educational Foundation, Inc. Bring them to CGCQC from August 14, this Sunday until September 11. Look for the drop box located at the lobby. For more information, you may contact Sister Gracie Gao. Good night and God bless.